Hello and welcome to Teaching Stream. My name is Sam and I'm the minister at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church. Teaching Stream is our teaching ministry here at Melton Mowbray Baptist Church on YouTube and it's intended primarily to form the curriculum for our small groups. We've recently been going through a series on deeper relationship with God. Our mission statement as a church is deeper relationship with God, with one another and with our community. And this series has been all about deeper relationship with God. You're joining us at the final session, which is all about communication, but the previous sessions are all here on our YouTube channel. So if this is the first video that you're looking at, uh, maybe go back to the beginning and check them out. But even if you just carry on watching, uh, I'm sure that there will be something in it that God might want to say to you. I'm going to pray uh, uh, and then let's dive in. Loving Father God, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for Teaching Stream. We thank you for everyone that's involved in producing it. We thank you particularly for Steve who puts them together and loads them up on our YouTube channel. Lord, I pray that today's uh, Teaching Stream would be a blessing to all those who watch it. And I pray that you would speak through the words, uh, through the way that it's put together. And I pray that we would have ears to hear what you have to say. I ask that in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. If you are the kind of person who likes to read helpful books on relationships, whether that is relationship in marriage, uh, parenting, friendship, uh, maybe that's business relationships, the relationship between manager and uh, employee and those that they manage. If you are someone who reads those kinds of books, then you are sure to find a chapter on the subject of today's teaching stream. If you have ever needed help with a relationship, whether that has been in a work situation, whether that has been in a marriage situation, whether that has been in a familial situation or a friend situation, you've had to go and, uh, and get some help from a therapist or a counsellor, then what we're about to talk, to talk about today is going to have been mentioned. Whole books have been written on this subject in terms of deepening relationships. And uh, I, I'm just going to scratch some of the surface of that. We're not going to get into all of that today. But the reason I mention all of this is because it is clear that everyone who is involved in relationships understands that communication is of vital importance. The first thing that you will be looking at if a human relationship is in breakdown is are these people communicating effectively with one another? Are they able to express themselves properly? And when they are being expressed, are they able to be heard? Is each person in the relationship listening? Is each person in the relationship expressing themselves truthfully? At the heart of good relationship is good communication. And this is no different when it comes to our deepening relationship with God. As we think about that today, first of all, we're going to think about how God communicates with us and how we listen to that. And then we're going to think about how we communicate with God and how he listens to it. Now, obviously, that's pretty different to uh, how we're going to think about those things when it comes to our human relationships, as we look at our deeper relationships with one another and deeper relationships with our community. But some of the principles are going to be exactly the same. Uh, and the core things are, are we listening to what is being said to us? Are we expressing ourselves in a truthful way? way. So let's go to our first section, which is listening to God. There are many conversations that I've had down through the years with people in churches where they are saying, I feel distant from God, or I don't feel like um, I, I am hearing from God. Uh, and there have been many points in my own life where that has been the case. And generally, uh, that has been caused by two things. One has been uh, traumatic circumstances. So people are going through a traumatic time and it's taking time to process that. And, uh, and actually the, the impact of the trauma is making um, the closeness to Father God uh, a difficulty. Or people have either stopped communicating with or trying to listen to what God is saying to them. 
So often when I speak with people or when I reflect on the times when I have felt distant from God, actually, what I have found is it has been a period of time where I have not been spending the time trying to listen to him. And when I investigate with other people, it has been a period of time where they have not been trying to listen. So how do we go about listening to God? As I said, it, listening is the cornerstone of any communication. We need to be listening so that we're able to express ourselves properly and also so we are able to hear what the other person is saying to us, what they are asking of us and, uh, and so we don't misrepresent the things that they're saying to us. Listening is of vital importance and so often we turn off our ears to God. So how does God communicate with us? How does he speak to us? Of primary importance in this, and you've probably guessed what I'm going to say because I've been mentioning it so much, is the Bible. God speaks to us through his words. This is his special revelation through the Spirit to us. That's not to say that the Spirit doesn't speak to us now today through uh, visions, dreams, uh, translated tongues, feelings, but actually the primary source where we get to hear what God is saying to us each day is in his word, the Bible. Now, how does God speak to us through the Bible? Well, sometimes he might speak to us because a friend or trusted Christian comes to us and gives us a word from the Bible that is helpful. Although what sometimes happens with those words when what we do is we cherry pick the bits of the Bible that work in certain situations, we don't really hear what God's saying to us. We just find comfort in particular words and phrases. I believe that the best way that we can hear from God through his Bible is to uh, commit to reading it in a systematic way. And that means that actually over the course of a month, we might choose a book that we will dwell in and we will just read through the book, taking time each morning to read in the Bible. My personal way of having Bible study is to read from different sections of the Bible each day. I'm usually reading through an Old Testament book. A, uh, I will always read a psalm. I'll always read something from a gospel and I will generally read something from the epistles. Currently, right now, I'm wading through Leviticus in the Old Testament um, and the psalm I read this morning was Psalm 24. Uh, I am reading through John's Gospel and I've just finished uh, the book of Colossians. I don't necessarily read a chapter every morning, but I might dip in and read uh, a section under one of the headings or there are times where I feel, no, I'm going to read the whole, whole chapter. Now, I'm not suggesting that this would work for everyone, but I feel that this is a really healthy way to be reading the Bible. It means that what I'm not doing is dipping into the bits that I know will make me feel better in any given situation, but rather I am coming to the Bible and allowing God to speak to me through it each and every day. I recognise not everyone has that much time for this and that I'm in a rather privileged position in that I can give over an hour uh, each day to be doing this kind of thing. Although don't, please don't start thinking I'm some kind of super Christian. I'm not. I don't always manage to do that. In fact, it's very rarely that long. But I, I recognise that that not, isn't necessarily what everyone can do. And I know that lots of people find it really useful to hear to God through his word by listening uh, through to one of the online Bible podcasts, uh, for example, Bible in a Year, or the David Suchet recording of the New International Version of the Bible. And this is another way in which we can hear what God is saying to us. There's a really important thing about coming to Scripture and allowing it to speak to our situation rather than looking at our situation and finding what we need in the Bible. Uh, that way round, we can always just about justify however we're feeling and what we want to do. If rather we are systematically reading through the Bible each and every day, then by surprise, God might say, no, that's a really good idea. Or we might find that actually what we're receiving is a counsel to uh, pause, take some time, reflect on what we're doing and approach whatever situation that we're facing in a different way. The other thing that reading in Scripture does is it builds us up a base level of knowledge of God, which we spoke about in our first session it gives us a base level of biblical metaphors. It gives us a base level of biblical images. It gives us a base level of biblical ideas and doctrines. And in doing so, what it empowers, I believe, is actually the works of the Holy Spirit 
to um, to remind us of those things that we have already locked away in our brain. I remember when I was younger, I was always uh, envious is probably the right word of those older Christians who could uh, say, look, I, the Lord has told me this and it's from verse blah, 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 and would bring it out in a, in a church setting or in a personal conversation. I've realised as I've gotten older that that only comes from actually being rooted in the Bible day in, day out, reading our Bibles and understanding what God is saying to us. God speaks to us through scripture. He speaks into our individual situation, but also in having a knowledge of who God is, we can start to begin to know what God is saying about our own personal situations and listening to him in this way. We also have the ability to hear what God is saying to us through the power of his Holy Spirit. Throughout scripture, we find examples of people hearing what God says to them in dreams, uh, in visions, in uh, the uh, prophetic words of other people, in the prophetic words of themselves. We hear of tongues being translated and then being prophetic. We hear God speaking to us uh, through his spirit in feelings, the sense of a deep and calm peace in situations where we should not be peaceful, but rather naturally we might panic. This is God communicating with us his presence. This is God communicating with us his peace. And as I said, I, we believe that God is speaking to us through his spirit here and now today. However, unlike scripture, what we need to do with with the things that God says us through the spirit, and I have heard a whole range of things um, as a result of what God has said to people, uh, pictures of red balloons that have spoken powerfully into my life, uh, specific words and verses. Someone has sung a song at a particular point in a service and it's spoken directly to me. Um, and, and there have been occasions where I have been able to join in with, with the Spirit saying something, I think. Um, but what we have to do when these things happen is we test it. We, we test any words of prophecy. We test anything that God is saying to us. And the standard by which we test it is the Bible. We also do it in community with one another. The community of the people of God, the church, are really good at discerning whether what we think God has said to us is the truth or whether it's just ourselves talking to ourselves. And what we need to create is an environment whereby actually being wrong doesn't mean that you're evil or you've done anything wrong. It just means that you've been vulnerable enough to try and bring it forward. And actually, we can always hear from what God is saying to us again. And next time, it might we might discern that actually, no, this is what God is saying. Uh, and that's what's really exciting about it. We are uh, picking through the words, pictures and visions that God gives to his church together as a community. And what we hope we do is that we brush aside those things that actually are uh, for the moment and we cling on to those things which are the treasures of heaven that God has given to us through his spirit and through one another. Listening to God is so very, very important and deserves us setting time aside to be able to do that. And whether that is devotional time in the morning or before we go to bed, actually, when we think about our prayer lives and when we think about our devotional lives, we should always find that we are leaving space for God to speak. When we come to his scripture, it, it's important that we don't simply read it and think tick job done, but rather we read it, we spend time in quiet, we reflect and we ask, what is God saying to me through these? You might remember in your small groups the questions that we ask scripture. What does this tell us about human beings? What does this tell us about God? And what does it mean I should change? They might be useful questions in your personal devotions because it allows you to spend time in allowing God to speak to us. It's just a suggestion. There's lots of other ways, whether that is um, the, uh, the slow reading of scripture, picking two verses that we read slowly, we hold silence, then we read it slowly again and see if God picks out any particular words that are speaking to us in this situation. But what I do think happens, though, is when we set side aside, uh, when we set time aside, when we pray into that time and ask God to speak to us, that God will honour it. And we might not notice that God has spoken to us in the moment, but actually halfway through the day, a week's time, a year's time, God might utilise that time that we have set aside to listen to him, to suddenly speak into our situation. Listening to God is vital in our relationship with God. 
and recognizing that he is a God who wants to speak to us and values us enough to speak to us is vital to our sense of who we are in him. Listening to God is a lifelong journey and I would encourage you to go on it. Starting with scripture, being open to the spirit speaking to you and devoting time to trying to hear what he is saying here and now today. And so we come to expressing ourselves, expressing ourselves to God. The first thing that we need to recognise when we express ourselves to God is firstly that he is listening, that he is a God who listens to us. Jesus tells us that God listens to what we ask him for and when what we ask him for is in line with his will, he is want to give it to us. It delights him to give us the desires of our hearts. One of the questions that we come up against when we think about speaking to God, and I'm talking here really about prayer, is when we consider uh, Psalm 139 that we looked at in our first session of these series is uh, knowledge of God, is that God actually knows what we're thinking and knows what we're going to say. However, what we have to recognise is that throughout the Bible we are still called to pray and that Jesus, who had uh, the most... uh, symbiotic perfect relationship with the father still took time aside to pray to him Jesus we hear praying to God in the garden of Gethsemane we hear Jesus who is God himself God the son who is one with the father expressing to God what he desires verbally and so I think that that gives us license to do the same so what are the key aspects in terms of expressing ourselves to God Well, the first thing that I want us to look at is I think really the first thing that we need to be doing when we're coming to God is to come to him with an attitude of praise and thanksgiving. Uh, Whether we are in a difficult situation or whether we are in a wonderful situation, the first thing that we should do is actually remind ourselves and remind God that we recognise who he is, that he is the God of the universe, that he is worthy of our praise, he's given us everything that we ever have. So we come to him with a sense of praise and thanksgiving. And in many ways, our, our praise is always our, our expressing ourselves to God when it's when it's honest. Um, so when we're singing uh, in church and we really mean the words that we're saying, uh, the words of praise, you know, our God is an awesome God who reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power and love. Our God is an awesome God. It's us expressing ourselves to God and expressing ourselves in praise. So we come to God firstly with praise. Then we need to come to God with honesty. If you look through the book of Psalms, I think the Psalms has some of the most human voices uh, in all of scripture because what we see is people expressing themselves in the every moment of life, whether they've just won a battle, whether they've just lost a battle, um, when they're, they have just had had children born when their children have died. We get it all in the Psalms. And what we see is people expressing themselves and sometimes expressing themselves in ways that we wouldn't necessarily in our polite kind of um, uh, middle-class Western church express ourselves. You know, people are asking that their enemies' babies' heads would be bashed against rocks. Now, I'm not saying that that's, you know, necessarily what how we want our hearts to be working, but what it demonstrates the fact that it's in the Psalms is that we are to come to God with our honesty, our openness and vulnerability. So if we're feeling angry, angry, uh, then we should express that to God. If we are feeling sad, then we should express that to God. At the same time, if we're feeling joyous, then we need to be expressing that to God too. Uh, I've spoken about this before and I'll speak about it again, I'm sure. But one of my favourite examples of prayer doesn't come from scripture, uh, but it actually comes from the musical Fiddler on the Roof. And the character Tevye in that is constantly in communication with God. His horse goes lame. He goes, God, you know, I I understand that my horse has gone lame, but it would have been helpful if it happened on another day. Um, Things like that. He's just always speaking, speaking to God, you know, um, Uh, I know it is no great crime to be poor, but would it have been such a shame if I was rich? You know, this this kind of continuing dialogue where he honestly brings his grumbles, his celebrations and everything to God. And and I think that's what we're invited to do with the Father is the idea of actually, it's like coming into, um, I don't know, this is 
probably potentially unique to my own situation growing up, but I'll still say it anyway. It's like that idea of going into your dad's study um, after you finish work and just telling him about your day, um, really honestly, and then leaving. It, it, it's got that intimate idea about it, our communication with God. And the other thing to remember is he does know everything anyway. So uh, it, 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 our communication with him is about an attitude, well, you knew what happened there. That's a perfectly acceptable kind of prayer. Uh, then what we need to be doing is we need to be bringing our needs to him. Uh, if we look at the Lord's Prayer, really it is a list of stuff that we need. We should we should ask God for the things that we need. That's part of our communication with him. Um, and we should be, and part of what we need is forgiveness. So when we're communicating with God, part of what we're doing is we're asking for God's forgiveness. We're being honest about the things that we've got wrong and we're asking for his guidance. And one of the most helpful things that I've learned when it comes to praying is when I don't know what to say about uh, as I come to prayer in God or when I'm in a situation where I don't want to pray, I don't want to communicate with God for whatever reason, actually expressing that to God is a very useful thing because he by his spirit has the power to open up our hearts. And, and it's worth remembering that uh, our beneath our our um, continual prayer, the Holy Spirit has a groan within our spirit, understands exactly what's going on within us. And actually in this way, we're sort of constantly praying our innermost and deepest needs to God through the groan of the Holy Spirit from within our own being. So with communication with God, actually, firstly, we express ourselves in praise. We remind ourselves who he is. Then we have to express ourselves in honesty and with vulnerability. There is no point hiding anything from a God who already knows everything. We need to give our needs to God and trust that actually he wants to give us the things that we need. We need uh, his forgiveness and we need to confess uh, the things that we have got wrong. And actually in those times where we feel like we actually can't speak to God, we can trust the Holy Spirit to prompt us. And one of the best things that we can possibly say to God is, Lord, I would love to talk to you right now, but I don't know how to do it. Would you help me? And actually, in my experience, what I've found is as a result of coming to God with that level of vulnerability and honesty and openness is I've suddenly been able to pray. Communicate with your father and be assured he is a longing to hear from you because he loves you and he has demonstrated it through the life of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus himself, who was God himself and fully man, communicated fully emotionally and vulnerably with his father God. And if anyone didn't need to, it was him. But he gave us the example that we should go to him and we should express ourselves openly and freely in the trust that our Father in heaven is trustworthy, will hear, and in line with his will, will respond. So that was a very speedy um, way of looking at communicating with God. If you'd like to read a book about it, and it's one that I'd really recommend, I think it's very good, uh, then I recommend uh, How to Pray by Pete Gregg. And I think that that's just a really uh, useful book and it has uh, it has some sort of step-by-step -step guides, tips, and, uh, and it's just a really useful book. So if you'd like to go more than my sort of glossing over on this subject um, to get through some major points, then I would suggest reading How to Pray by Pete Gregg. This is our final session in our deepening relationship with God. Uh, I hope that you found it useful and uh, I hope that if you have any questions or anything that you'd like to say, you'd either put them in the comments or email me at sam at mmbc.org.uk. I would love to chat with you and, uh, and respond to any ideas that you've had, uh, hear what you think about this, uh, areas where you think maybe, oh, I'm not sure that's right, or I'd just love to chat with you about it. So please do get in touch. I, I do hope that this has been uh, a blessing to you and I continue to pray that that's the case. So let's pray together and then I'll say goodbye. Loving Father God, help us to listen to you and express ourselves to you in open and vulnerable ways. Help us to hear your voice and help us to express ourselves in openness. 
Lord, may we trust that you are so interested in us that you wish to speak and you wish to hear. May we know that by your spirit this day and always. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming along for this ride. Uh, next week is going to be an Advent special and then we'll be taking a break over Christmas. Thank you.